We are approaching uh, the uh, top of the descent for our approach into Gang Susak, Sundarsamfjord. So I will do the approach briefing now. And uh, as min Michael mentioned earlier, we will do the uh, visual approach, but I will have the instrument approach plate uh, present as a backup. And as Michael, Michael mentioned, we will come this way, passing the uh, highest peak on the, on the map. Is is at uh, 2,300 uh, feet, but we will be around 4,000 uh, feet coming around here. And a beam the uh, airfield. We will start uh, configure the aircraft, which means uh, putting out the flaps and uh, putting down the gear. And we will come down the fjord here, and we will aim for about six miles final. That's around 1,700 feet. We can see that here. Six miles, 1,760. But due to the uh, cold temperature, it's uh, almost 15 degrees below uh, freezing point, and uh, that's uh, 30 degrees below standard temperature at sea level. And for every uh, 10 degrees below standard uh, temperature, we have to add 4% to our minimum altitude. And, uh, and today, because it's 30 degrees below, Standard temperature, it will be around 12% uh, we have to add to our minimum uh, altitudes all the way in for landing. So I'll be flying around uh, 4,000 feet on the downwind leg and when we can descend down to uh, an, uh, our base leg and uh, to intercept our inbound course which is 0902. And as uh, Michael mentioned, we have 30 degrees uh, between 2 north and magnetic north and all the winds we get on the radio and on our charts, uh, they are given in true north. And the wind coming from the tower, uh, it's, it's uh, magnetic and the runway in Gansusak is uh, in magnetic direction as well. So we have to take care of uh, adding those 30 degrees between the magnetic and true north to our calculation. We have this feature. My flight from Airbus, where we can put in the, uh, the airports, the uh, runway, we are going to land on runway 09. The wind is 100 degrees, 12 knots, but the wind on the paper, or, he, or Michael received on the radio, it was uh, 070 degrees, 12 knots. So I, I have added those 30 degrees we talked about. Temperature is uh, 14 below freezing point. The Q&H, or the, uh, the, uh, the air pressure at the airport is 1028 hectopascal. We don't actually know about the runway conditions yet, but uh, until now we have uh, entered uh, braking action good, but we know much about that when we get in contact with the uh, tower. We have selected the anti ice of the aircraft off and we have entered the uh, landing weight. Today 178 tons. We'll be landing with all our flaps and slats uh, at the uh, furthermost out position. We have the aircon, uh, air conditioning on the aircraft uh, for landing. It will be a normal landing approach. And uh, today, because it's a very mountainous area, we have a kind of uh, steep uh, missed approach procedure. So the, uh, we need to calculate our missed approach procedure. If we're not able to land in Gansusak, we have to make uh, an uh, escape procedure out of the uh, mountainous area, and we have to climb at least 5% to get uh, out of the area safe. Then we can add some speeds if we want that. Uh, we are using the brake mode, that's the auto brake for the aircraft. When the aircraft feels we are on the ground, it will start braking itself. And of course, I can always take over. But we have calculated with the lowest possible auto brake. And we are not calculating by, uh, we are not cal calculating using any reverse on the engines today. And now I, with all these figures uh, entered, I will have the result that says the uh, aircraft, if I put the aircraft on the exact right spot, the landing distance will be 1,891 meters. But uh, not every pilot can put it on the exact spot. So in this company, we have added another 15%. And that gives us a factored landing distance. So there's some room for, for improvement, I might say. But, uh, if I'm not able to put it on the right shape, I have some safety margin. So the factored landing distance will be 2,175 meters. So we actually still have a margin before we 
end uh, run out of uh, the runway. So we imagine it's 635 meters. Here we can see we have a headwind for landing of 12 knots and a crosswind of 2 knots. So there will not be any uh, crosswind issues today. When we, if we are not able to land on the runway, we have to shoot this uh, Mr. Port Spachita, which says we have to climb on the localizer course until marker. A marker is actually a radio beacon that is uh, placed in the middle of the runway. You can see it's this uh, gray shape here. It's something that we can hear in our radio. It says beep, beep, beep. And this is our marker that says we have, when we reach the marker, we have to turn right to the track of 107, climbing to 4000, and then another right turn back to the NDB called Sierra Foxtrot, this is this one, and join the holding pattern at at least 4,400 feet. Those are the minimum altitudes which we have to add this 12% uh, to the low temperature. Furthermore, we have to set the right uh, radio navigation aids. I have India Sierra Foxtrot, which is the localizer and DME uh, frequency. The inbound course is 0902, it's only for backup. And I can set the uh, Sierra Foxtrot beacon. It's for this one. You can see the frequency is 382. I put this in the navigation page on the MCDU. So now I, now I have set up the radio navigation. And I check the approach section. I have put in the weather. The minima is 550 for visual approach. The normal is 500, so I have added the around 12. 10% for uh, the t low temperature, and we can see the Mr. Approach is 4,400. Uh, 4,400 was the minimum altitude for the Mr. Approach, and I have added around 12%, uh, so I have 4,900. We also have to discuss uh, how much extra fuel and time we have. As we, when we left Copenhagen, we uh, had uh, enough fuel to get back to Copenhagen, so we actually don't have to refuel in Gansusak. But we have to mention that Keflavik is our alternate, and we actually have two hours and 56 minutes of extra fuel for our landing in Gansusak. Before, if the weather was uh, very bad in Gansusak, we could hold for actually two hours and 56 minutes before we had to go to Iceland. We also have to discuss any threats uh, when you're coming to an airport like this, or any airports actually. Uh, the threats in uh, Gansusa could be a contaminated runway. We don't know uh, anything about that yet. And uh, of course the mountainous area of, uh, of Gansusa. But today we have maybe 200 uh, kilometers of good visibility and the lowest cloud was in 19,000 feet, so the, it's not a problem. We can see all the terrain around us, so I would guess the, uh, the terrain is not a uh, threat issue today. So the threat today would be something like the minimum, uh, te the low, very low temperature, and the, the contamination of the runway, but we will uh, check up uh, on that later. And if I may add, just to put uh, Ivan's excellent briefing into perspective here, if we have to divert back to Keflavik, it's a one hour and 45 flying in an Airbus 330. So we are at the very remote parts of the world uh, as, as, as one hour and 45 flying to the alternate is, uh, is quite a distance. It's, it's not coming from the rest of the world. Yeah, that's the approach briefing today. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon from the Titanic. The co is speaking. We have now around 30 minutes for landing in Gansusak. We will shortly start our descent and approach, so please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened. This is weather report for Gansusak. Says uh, light to moderate easterly winds, good visibility, very uh, high clouds, and the temperature is 14 degrees below freezing point. We will be landing uh, pretty close to our arrival schedule arrive time. That's uh, 10:40 uh, local time in Copenhagen, now in Greenland, of course. If you're going southbound to the capital city of Greenland, Nook, variable light winds, good visibility, uh, high cloud temperature is four degrees below freezing point. And going northbound to Ilulisset, we have uh, moderate easterly winds, good visibility, drifting snow. 
Few clouds, temperature is 12 degrees below freezing points. I have you, hope you have enjoyed the flight with us today and I'll sit back, enjoy the last uh, 30 minutes in our company. Have a very good on a journey and a safe trip home. Thank you, goodbye. Center point approach, good morning, Greenland 781. Greenland 781, center approach, good morning, you are identified uh, approximately 46 west, corking 2124. When ready, to send to flight level 110. Pilot discretion, flight level 110, Greenland 781. 781 and runway news 09 with vectoring for localized approach or visual approach. Expect the visual. Wind is uh, 110 degrees, 11 knots, visibility 10 kilometers, clouds view 19,000 feet, temperature minus 15, dew point minus 20, QH 1028, transit level 90. And I have a snow term for you, number 131 when you're ready. Weather is copied with the QH 1028, go ahead with the snow term green and 71. Yep, uh, snow term 131. Runway report for climb 1230, runway contamination for runway 09, 5-0%, 2 mm rime or frost, sweeping in progress, measured friction 58-6059 by taplimeter, Taxiway Alpha um, has braking action good and April North braking action good. Snow time is copied, green and 71. Yes, Ian. Uh, 50% of uh, covered, one way covered 50% with 2 mm frost or rime. And that's good. Yeah. Agreed? Yes. Very good. So, so no the, calcu change. the calculation remains valid yeah. with the information. Correct. 110 blue. Check. Trust idle. Ohms. It's. Mark 80 for this. Check. Seat percent, perhaps. Good idea. Yep. It's going to be a beautiful day. It's going to be a beautiful approach. Uh, lowest clouds are reported to be 19,000 feet, so uh, we should have a very clear view with the morning sun coming in at uh, Kangasusak this morning. Now, for the viewers, uh, in, the, in the distance, what we see now is the very end of the ice cap to the west, and you can see the, the mountains uh, is, is starting to pop up. Um, the hills, so to speak, here is not really mountains. Isolated in the, uh, in the ice cap, uh, and very at the closest to us, at us there is a, there's a small peak, and it's surrounded by, by ice, and it's called the Navigator's Rock. And the Navigator's Rock has uh, got its name back during the Second World War when the navigation and the, these uh, part of the world were even more difficult than it, they are today with uh, the uh, difference between the magnetic and the true north and the limited uh, navigation standard, the limited systems and so on. So whenever the, the aviators uh, missed uh, the airport or missed their bearings. They they knew when they reached the uh, the edge of the ice cap, they had to f they could follow the ice cap uh, north south track, and when they reached Navigator's Rock, they had to do a turn in a westerly direction and find the fjord, and that's the fjord where Sunderstrom Fjord is located. So there was a very Dominated, uh, dominating uh, geographical marker that, that could guide them on the way. In the same manner, uh, similar th issues have been invented during the war for the West Coast. And they were named uh, by letters and uh, numbers and painted on all the, the settlements' roof the, the biggest roof, roof top of uh, the settlements, they would, uh, and it will, they would uh, paint a number like a uh, H8, Hotel 8, and whenever you were coming from Canada towards Greenland uh, and you were lost and you hit the coastline, you would turn north or southbound depending on where you 
thought you were or your best guess. And when you pass the uh, settlements, you could look down, find the number and of the, uh, on the roof of the village, and then you had a map, and on the map you could take that number and plot exactly where you were. Of course, in the winter. <laughs> it, it, it required the, the settlements, uh, the inhabitants of the settlements to, to go on the roof and, and clear the roof for snow, or you would not see it. But uh, that's a different story. So, a little from uh, back then. Navigator's Rock, just out 11 o'clock uh, from this flight. Thank you for listening in. And approach checklist. Briefing. Confirmed. Check. No news. Ecamp status. Checked. V box. 140. 2 Set. Checked. Seat belts. On. Bell ref. 1 seater 27, reading 6900 new. Check. Minimum. 550 MDA. Check. In the start selector. Normal. Approach checklist complete. Check. Radio has been alive. Check. A couple of downwinds. Hvem er godt på lading? Ja, så kan jeg ikke igen prepare for approach. Det har jeg jo ikke ligesom nået i den her ting her. Speed is checked. I'll go one. down to 4,200 feet, soap descent. You have the airport at uh, 1 to 2 o'clock.
Speed check. Flaps two. Speed check. Flaps two. Good. Full flaps, landing checklist please. Flaps full and a landing checklist. Cabin crew. Secure advised. Out of trust. Speed. Over brakes. Low. Go around altitude. 4900 blue. Sit. Eka memo. Landing no blue. Landing cans to go. Check. Six miles, 1700. Green at 781, wind 100 degrees, 100 knots, and the 09 are clear to land. Clear to land, Green at 781. Landing clearance. Received. Checklist completed. Check. Two heads, two heads. Excellent. Very nice. Seventy knots. 
Tak. Your controls. My controls. My brakes. The uh, taxi distance is, is extremely short in uh, Ganglusak. We will clean the aircraft on the runway. And Jonathan in that direction, just to the right of the uh, Sugarloaf, Sugarloaf like mountain, you can actually in the horizon see the ice cap. That's like a horizon line, that's the ice cap. Craft and check complete. Thank you.
Dog. Spinos. Reverse green. Deceleration. Seven knots. Take. Your controls. My controls. Main brakes. Continue. Check. My controls. Main brakes. Keep you wheel. Thank you. You know any? Can I take you? I don't. Can I see you? Are you bleed on? Yes. Thank you. So, uh, one last uh, comment from the left seat. Uh, welcome to Kangaluswak. Uh, we're just next to the Kitchen Mountain, which is in front of us. Uh, we had a lovely approach in here, uh, which you hopefully have seen in the uh, recordings uh, ahead of this particular one. 
What I would point out is uh, the landing was a 1.2% upslope, which is very untraditional and quite difficult to make unless you want to make a hard landing. And Ivan did a perfect landing today, uh, which we could feel, but you can't uh, in front of the, the screens. But I, I tell you, it, it, it was a good one. Uh, and then uh, we had to call the tower and ask if we actually touched down. Uh, so that's how smooth it was. Anyhow, what we did do for you today is that if you reached this far and you didn't give up before, you have to spool back. And somewhere in some of the pre-recordings, we put an Easter egg. If you can find it, you're a lucky one. If you can't, keep looking. And then I'm going to not... Before I pass the word to uh, Ivan, I would say thank you to Jonathan Heather, who is behind the camera, and uh, Just Planes to come along with us today. And hopefully, my company will invite them back uh, in a year from now and, uh, and a visit on the Airbus 330. And then back in 2024, when we start flying 2,200 meter runway operations in Nuuk and Iluliset by the Disco Bay, we will see them again. With those, word, with those words, I pass it over to Ivan to, to close the session. It's your word. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the uh, flight to Gangstrusak from Copenhagen. I cannot promise you an Easter egg on our bay, uh, way back to Copenhagen, but I can promise you that this aircraft will go to Copenhagen from Gangstrusak next Thursday. I hope you'll join us. Thank you.